Cole, you said you wanted to be on TikTok, right? You wanted to be on my TikTok? You gotta be based if you wanna be on my TikTok. Oh, yeah, I can be based. Say something based. Like, I'll be like your hype man when it comes to politics. Like, I'll be like, yeah, you talk about how capitalism sucks. Yeah, you, you <laughs> hate those birds, those birds. <laughs> oh my god, that was pretty fucking based. It's it's bourgeois, but I appreciate I appreciate the effort though. I appreciate I also appreciate that I've never told you hang the bourgeois. I learned that from Technoblade. <laughs> Did you actually? I kid you not. He was talking about like he was making an analogy. Okay, what I'm about to say might be a little bit controversial, but you know what? I don't care because it's true. Boys named Ben and tennis balls have the exact same energy. Boys named Ben, tennis ball. Same energy. You can't tell me I'm wrong because it's the truth. Grub up perks give you deals on the food you love. The kind of deals that make you want to boogie. No, no. no. I was just listening to 100 Gex on Spotify, and then the album ended, and then it auto-played to mid -tee. I understand the connection there. I understand that the audiences of 100 Gex and Misty probably overlap quite a bit. And then Spotify sees that a lot of people are listening to both of these artists, and then it's like, oh, they must be similar, I'm gonna play them one after the other. Like, I, I understand that, but imagine not having that context, and then going from 100 Gex to Mitski. I don't know who needs to hear this, but it's come up again recently, so I'm going to reiterate it. No child is medically transitioning. The most a child will do to transition is socially transition by changing their name, their pronouns, their clothing, and their hair, and coming out to their peers and to teachers and such, and they might take hormone blockers. Hormone blockers are completely safe and reversible. All hormone blockers do are prevent puberty from starting. That means a child who is questioning their gender can start hormone blockers, and then, therefore, no secondary sex characteristics will develop. If they're assigned female at birth, this means, like, developing breasts during their period. Assigned male at birth, growing facial hair, stuff like that, voice deepening. This gives the child time to decide whether or not they actually want to transition. If they decide that they're not actually trans, they can stop hormone blockers and puberty will proceed as normal. If they are trans, then all these unwanted changes won't happen and it'll make medical transition far easier and cheaper in the future. Cis children take puberty blockers all the time in case they have early onset puberty. They're completely safe and reversible, you just sound. Hey guys, I don't know if you knew this, but there was a new law passed saying that all lesbians all over the world are allowed to get a free AK-47 and use it however they want. So I just wanted to let you guys know about that. I saw this thing on TikTok where you can put rubber duck accessories on your hat, and because I own a rubber duck store, I just naturally had to do it, so let's try this. Just like that. And you take a rubber duck with a little hole in the bottom, and you, you do this. See what it looks like. That's awesome. Hey Neil, do you know what day it is? I think it's Christmas Eve. That's right. Maybe we should watch a movie or something to get ourselves into the holiday spirit. Why don't you go ahead and pick something? Godzilla. That's uh, it's not really a Christmas movie. Uh, try again. That, that is somehow even less of a Christmas movie. Um, look, just pick a Christmas movie. I'll give you one more try. You know what? Close enough, sure. Oh, you have short hair, you must be musty. Oh, you have short hair, you must be gay. You have short hair. You have short hair. The lights are on, but no one's home. Okay, not only am I gonna answer your question, but I'm also gonna throw something out there for the pre-T trans guys who might be a little dysphoric. Also, just a short heads up and for the record, not all trans people might be comfortable answering this question, so just be careful who you ask. I had top surgery two years ago, my chest is flat, I have no titties. Notice my chest is dude flat, not bored flat. I too got upset when my binder didn't really give me the results I was looking for. This, this is not natural, this is hunched. This is normal. Having a little bump in the front is normal. Because you're the one wearing the binder, you're going to be super self-critical. So man's had nice titties. Titties. Small bump. Little bit of protrusion. Board flat is unrealistic. The bump is normal. Chests come in all shapes and sizes. You look good. Take a deep breath. Yo, Zoom college getting too difficult these days. Lord knows I don't cheat. 
but I'm gonna have to ask Bing on this one. I was legitimately not a feminist until I worked at a strip club. Let's talk about that. I bounced at a gentleman's club uh, for about three months. And let me tell you something, I have never seen men in a more visceral, predatory state than in that setting. When I tell you I kicked out at least 10 to 15 guys a night because they tried to do shit like stick a digit in a stripper when nobody was looking. Not only would they be trying to sneak around the strippers even though they're fully functioning human beings, but I'd see them eyeballing me, make sure I wasn't paying attention so they could do some fuck shit. That's why I'm wary of guys that love to go to strip clubs now. I'm just like, you really sitting there to pay all that money in that money trap so you can ogle people that want nothing to do with you, bro, except for your wallet? <sighs> okay. Hello, I'm Baz. Uh, today is uh, Trans Pop Culture. And I'm going to be talking actually about Squishmallows. <laughs> this might seem like kind of a silly thing to talk about, but Squishmallows are very popular within the LGBTQ plus community and they are also a highly popular plushy brand. And recently they have been coming out with non-binary Squishmallows. Each Squishmallow comes with a tag that has a name and a little paragraph about them. And recently they have been releasing tags that have they, them pronouns in them. Uh, and people tweeted at the company asking if this was actually a thing and if there are non-binary Squishmallows and they replied yes and they were planning on making more. It might be a small thing but I know that it's brought a lot of joy to a lot of people in the non-binary community and it is just very cool to see a, such a big popular brand be introducing non-binary genders to their plushies. <laughs> I think it's really cool and I wanted to share that. Conducting interviews with the boys in my sober living home part one. Would you rather have, would you rather find true love or have a monkey sidekick? Monkey sidekick. No. Would you rather find true love or have a monkey sidekick? Monkey sidekick. Would you rather find true love or have a monkey sidekick? Monkey sidekick. Would you rather have a, would you rather find true love or have a monkey sidekick? Oof. I don't have a penis. Easy answer. Would you rather find true love or have a monkey sidekick? Monkey sidekick. Would you rather find true love or have a monkey sidekick? And this is obviously just my experience, but when queer women, and specifically queer women, are interested in his, like historic aesthetics, you know, like 20s, 50s, 70s, they are purely interested, purely interested in the clothing, the housing, the decor, that kind of thing, purely aesthetics. But when straight men do it, it is always about wanting to be racist. Please be like, oh yeah, you're never going to find a man, you're too dark. Who taught you how to put on your makeup? Because I swear there's a clown in front of me. Why is two caterpillars looking at me in my eyes? Go sort out your own life. Oh, you're queer and or from a small town and or have childhood trauma. Which song do you want to scream at 3 a.m.? You are coming down with me. Hand in unlovable hand and I hope you die. on my shoulders collarbones begin to crack there is very little left of me and it's never coming back i could go off the deep end i could kill all my best friends okay so here's the deal my husband's pregnant with the second baby yes my husband's pregnant with the second baby don't make me get into it just google transgender pregnancy watch any of my past videos and if you watch a video and you're confused read the comments i don't know anyway let me continue so now the second baby's on the way we have to free up the crib which means big girl here hey she had to get a big girl bed so we ordered a twin size bed the postman just delivered it i opened the door i saw the bed i started sobbing uncontrollably he doesn't know what's wrong with me i don't know what's wrong with me but she can run she can walk she can talk i don't know what the shit she's saying half the time but to get there half of the time i do know and i just don't know when she grew up I'm gonna be crying for at least another 20 minutes. That's all. I can't wait to get old and like be an old man in the middle of a small town who only speaks in like riddles and metaphors and rhymes. I go up to like a counter and I'm like, could I please get a number nine? I need to fill this stomach of mine. When a game gives you two options of uh, gameplay and you pick the harder one, and now it's been years and you still can't beat Sans. <laughs>
You know when you see someone wearing a cute and stylish outfit and you're like, oh, how did they put that together? Well, I'm gonna share an outfit formula that works every time. Grab a knit sweater, it can be any color or any style, and pair it with something that has a silk or satin finish. This can be a dress, pants, skirt. Then you wanna pull it together with some leather or fake leather accessories. The outfit magic is really all the textures from the knit to the satin to the leather. It's like, what bam. the fuck? Boys named Ben and tennis balls have the exact same energy. I got tagged in this video a suffocating amount of times, and therefore, I did in fact change my username to Bennis Ball. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is the best decision I've ever made. I think it's the best decision that I have ever made. Honestly. Woo! Poorly executed magic trick. Thank you, Simpartee. I'm once again saying I'm not a simp. I'm all powerful. I don't have the time to simp. Let's go. I thought I thought that was gonna be a joke, but who who are these men? Is it really bad that I don't know? <laughs> Why transition in a pandemic, you might ask? Well, look at her. She is chic and stylish and she looks good. And then, um... Hmm, yes. Every once in a while, I bring up my TikTok to my mom. And she's she's been very supportive. She's been wonderful. But um, she always gives me the same, like, well, I just hope if anybody says something mean or gives you any hate, like, I don't know, just don't take it to heart. And she's right. You should not take shit from anybody on the internet ever. But... One, she gave me internet access when I was 12. I was on Tumblr in middle school. I watch people get death threats for not shipping Jean Locke, okay? Second of all, I am an egomaniac. I don't take shit from anyone ever. The funniest thing you can do to me is give me a death threat because I cannot die. Third, th and this applies to anybody, you cannot take an insult seriously if you reply by flirting with them funniest shit ever the other day this isn't even a proper insult the other day somebody commented like i hate your profile picture i want to bash uh... her against the wall like, first of all what did monica from doki doki literature club ever do to you second of all are we about to kiss right now funniest shit you're looking at Texas right now and thinking, it seems pretty bad that a state's electrical grid can fail overnight from a snowstorm. I have news for you. It's so much worse than you could ever imagine. Don't be a heartless idiot and blame red state voters. It's red states, blue states, purple states, green states, everywhere is in crisis. In 2017, the American Society of Civil Engineers gave our energy grid a D plus because almost all of it was built in the 1950s and 60s with a 50 year life expectancy and we're 10 to 20 years past that. Across the country, 640,000 miles of high voltage lines run at full capacity at almost all times, which is way more than the grid was designed to handle and Texas in particular is one of the worst ratios between planned and real capacity. It's so bad that the US government has said that if just nine of America's 50 55,000 electrical substations were brought down. It could cause a coast-to-coast -coast blackout lasting 18 months or more. And testimony from the executive director of Task Force on National and Homeland Security has said a prolonged collapse of the electrical grid could result in the death of up to 90% of the American population. Today, the U.S. has more power outages than any other developed country. And that's because 68% of the electricity in the U.S. is managed by investor-owned privatized utility companies. And updating their systems cuts into their profits, so they don't do anything until something fails. And when things do fail and, for example, start massive wildfires in California, guess who pays for it? Mostly taxpayers. There's no good news, and that's just the tip of the iceberg because all of America's infrastructure is failing. So I'm gonna keep doing videos about it. That's a very good question. Why are you on gay TikTok? That doesn't seem like something you should be asking me. It seems like something you should be asking yourself. POV, your girlfriend is taking you to the psych ward because you're insane. Can you believe how soon Miku is British, Jarvis, right? What a disappointment. Guess what side of the road they drive on in Japan? Please, I don't think it's a good time for a quiz right now. This news hit really close to home and I'll need a while to collect myself. Imagine searching your whole life for the chosen one who will destroy the Matrix and save the human race and you find him and he's fucking Keanu Reeves. You find him doing what? If Hello Kitty was real, we would be best friends. Me and you, or you and Hello Kitty? Me and you. Make no mistake, not only am I party rocking, but I'm also in the house tonight. Are you shuffling? Every day. Are you gonna pick those penne noodles out of the boiling water one by one like a man? Are you gonna use a strand like some kind of democrat? If Walter White were a woman, everything he did would be girl boss. But unfortunately, since he's a man, everything he did was cringe and bad, I guess. Most dangerous places on earth, volcanoes. Why? Nowhere to grab a bite to eat. You are either a fairy lights person or an LED lights person, and there's absolutely no in between. Yeah, I have but one query. Now, where the fuck does my lamp on the wall fit in? Sir, your scale is wrong. 
American schools are all about singing the praises of capitalism until it comes to your underground silly band trading ring in the third grade, then it gets a lot less laissez-faire. What happened to the free market? Are you a commie, Miss Smith? Welcome back to Where Have Gay People Been for the Last 5,000 Years, and today's episode, we're back in Mesopotamia. The Assyrians were one of the first cultures to actually have written laws against certain sexual behaviors. These laws give us good insight into how relationships were structured and viewed. Same-sex relationships, both male and female, were very common in ancient Assyria. But the Assyrians were very strict. For example, they never allowed anything that wasn't consensual. And there were laws banning people in the military from having relationships. And if you did, well, snip snap. However, there was nothing condemning consensual relationships between two people. There was a certain sense of hierarchy to these relationships, though. For example, it was a bad omen if two people of different classes had relationships with each other. Priests of the goddess Ishtar were known to change their names to female names and wear female clothes and adopt female gender norms when serving their god. Our next episode is China, so come stick around. Don't miss the episode.